Wave Properties There are several basic properties of cyclic waves. The previous video discussed a wave amplitude, such as the loudness of a sound wave. Now we're going to look at three other important properties, namely wavelength, frequency, and wave speed. These three properties are not independent, and we'll see how they're related. Let's start with some definitions. Recall that the amplitude is the measure of the material displacement from the apex to the center. Uh, for example, for water waves, this amplitude could be measured as the height of a wave in feet. The wavelength is basically just the length of the wave. It's, a di it's the distance between the peaks of the waves or between the troughs of the waves. Uh, here you see some examples for longitudinal and transverse waves. Uh, in this um, computer graphics image, uh, there's various types of waves of various uh, wavelengths. Uh, the short wavelengths are the small ripples, and the long wavelengths are the long rolling waves. The frequency is the number of oscillations per second for the wave's material motion. If we were creating waves on a slinky, then how rapidly we shake it determines the frequency. The faster you shake it, the higher the frequency. For example, if you shake it 10 times per second, then the frequency is 10 hertz. For sound waves, we detect frequency as pitch. That is, sound waves of different frequencies are heard as different musical notes. On tuning forks, the frequency is marked right on the handle. Uh, this large tuning fork has a frequency of 256 hertz, which is the musical note middle C. The small tuning fork vibrates faster. It has a frequency of 512 hertz, which is also C, but one octave higher. One important aspect of waves is that when waves interact with their own reflection, we can get a repeating pattern. For example, if you take a string and you shake one end while holding the other end fixed, then you get this periodic pattern called a standing wave. The nice thing about a standing wave is that it's easy to see the wavelength, which is the distance between the peaks. Here you see me making a standing wave by shaking a slinky. Notice that I have to adjust the shaking frequency in order to get the waves that I'm creating to be synchronized with their reflections. And when I change the frequency, I get different lengths for the waves. Uh, we'll see more of that in just a moment. Here's another example of standing waves but with longitudinal instead of transverse waves. I'm shaking on the left and the waves are reflecting on the right. Towards the left hand side of the screen, you should be able to see the pattern that develops as a standing wave. The third property of waves is the wave speed, which is simply the speed at which the waves travel. Sound waves travel fairly quickly, about a fifth of a mile per second, uh, but this is still a detectable speed. If you see a lightning flash, you don't hear the thunder until a few seconds later, because it takes that long for the sound waves to reach you. Light waves travel at the speed of light, uh, which is the fastest possible speed. On the other hand, uh, water waves are quite slow. Uh, their wave speed is only a few miles per hour, so at the beach uh, you can leisurely watch them slowly approaching the shore.
as I said, uh, the wave speed, wavelength, and frequency are related. Specifically, the wave speed equals the wavelength times the frequency. This equation is less important than the relations shown in this table. For example, if we hold the wave speed fixed and we increase the frequency, then the wavelength of the resulting waves goes down. In other words, the higher the frequency, the shorter the waves. Here's my feeble attempt to demonstrate the relation between wavelength and frequency using a panpipe. The short pipes produce sound waves with short wavelengths, so that sound has a high frequency. We hear that as a high-pitched note. Similarly, the long pipes produce long wavelength sound waves. Those waves have a low frequency. Wow, that's really pathetic. Here's an organ pipe with a piston that allows me to vary the length of the pipe. The pipe has a high pitch when the pish piston is pushed in, since the pipe is short. The pipe has a low pitch when the piston is pulled out, since the pipe is long. On a guitar, you can shorten the length of a string by putting your finger on the fretboard. The shorter the distance between your finger and the soundboard, the higher the frequency of the sound wave. The longest wavelength for a standing wave is called the fundamental. If that's uh, 256 hertz, then cutting the wavelength in half doubles the frequency. That takes us up to the first overtone, which is the same musical note in the next octave. Each guitar string has a different wave speed due to the string's thickness and the material that it's made out of. The strings with a slow wave speed produce low notes, and the strings with a fast wave speed uh, produce high notes. Increasing the tension on a guitar string increases the wave speed. The length of the string doesn't change, so increasing the wave speed increases the frequency of the sound waves. The tighter the string, the higher the pitch of the note. Here's another example of holding the wavelength fixed, but increasing the wave speed and getting an increasing frequency. In this case, the wavelength is determined by my vocal cords, and I'm going to increase the wave speed by breathing helium. Okay, so this is my normal voice. And this is my voice after I'm breathing helium. You notice the difference. The wave speed changes because the speed of sound in helium is higher than in ordinary air. Uh, let's hear another example. Hello, I'm Dr. Paul. This is what my normal voice sounds like. And this is what my voice sounds like on helium. Here is uh, one last example. Uh, as ocean waves enter shallow water, they slow down, uh, that is the wave speed decreases. The frequency stays the same, so as the waves slow down, the wavelength shortens. Uh, when the waves get very close to shore, they become so short that their shape distorts and the wave breaks. So in uh, summary, the wavelength is the distance between the wave crests or between the wave troughs of uh, waves. The frequency is the number of oscillations per second 
for the wave's material motion. The wave speed is the speed at which uh, the waves move. For fixed wave speed, the larger the wavelength, the lower the frequency, and uh, vice versa. For fixed wavelength, the higher the wave speed, the higher the frequency. And for fixed frequency, the lower the wave speed, the shorter the wavelength. In the next few videos, uh, we'll see how these wave properties are related to various wave phenomena, uh, things like resonance, uh, spectra, stuff like that.